The pressure of transport organizations has shifted from moving citizens to keeping a core system operational for workers essential to the COVID-19 response. A secondary effect is the sudden change in sources of revenue for transport operators, with many experiencing an unexpected shortfall in their finances. The response by governments and organizations all over the world has suddenly impacted way of life and that of the global transportation system. However, Lagos experienced its first day of ease lockdown on Monday. I am now joined by Olamide Udoma. Hello, Olamide. Hello, good morning. Good day. Thank you for joining us on the news. Now, having read the post-lockdown measures, particularly for the transport sector and also seen the clips from our reports, uh, the reality on ground, how predictable are the scenes we see? Um, well, I mean, they're, they're, they're very predictable for the fact that we can only have, you know, 60% of uh, people on transport, uh, whether it's... Uh, you know, um, informal transportation or formal transportation. You can only fill the bus with 60 people. Uh, sorry, 60%. Um, you know, it's going to be chaotic. The second thing is, you know, there's, there's no regulation on how much you can charge on, you know, um, down for buses. So you can, they can go as high or as low as, as they want. In addition, with uh, Keke Marawas, you're only allowed to have, what, two passengers? That doesn't allow for the distance that... Um, a two meter or even one meter requirement that is advised by both our NCDC or international standards. So there's a real issue in terms of uh, talking about how our transportation sector is going to work um, in the coming months um, as well as in the future. Now, taking a practical look at the situation on ground, a passenger walks into the, gets on the bus and is about to I highlight, right? There are a number of things. Your hand is definitely touching on the seats which is marked an X. Now, what should these what what should these protocols have included to better protect the passengers at these very perilous times? Because to be honest, people have to be very careful at this time. Yeah, indeed. And I don't. I mean, to be honest, I don't think it was the best move to um, open up the economy, open up, lock, remove the lockdown uh, so soon without putting in place certain things. So, for example, I mean, really, 60% capacity is not going to uh, improve uh, social distancing. Um, in addition, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you're going on the bus, you don't have gloves, you are, you know, in close contact with people. Yes, you're wearing a mask, but doesn't mean that you know, there's also no water provided at certain bus, at every bus stop or where you're alighting uh, from the bus. So you can't wash your hands as, you know, as much as you might be able to, especially in public spaces. So those are the kinds of things that we should have started thinking about. How many, uh, you know, portable kind of hand washing stations can we have in various areas of the city? Maybe you should have been, you know, area by area uh, lockdown removal rather than, you know, a big city, an urban city such as you know, uh, Lagos. Um, in a lot of cities, they're looking at other varieties of transportation, such as making sure people can walk safely, um, can cycle safely, so that there is you are going alone in your in your own uh, transportation mode rather than on on the bus. Um, also, you know, right now people have to go to work and have to go back to work because the lockdown has been um, has been uh, removed. So, you know, there should have been a gradual process. I don't think it's a great idea at this point when we are not, you know, are, are, we're still at an infancy stage of this uh, virus being in Nigeria. We're not at the stage, for example, of China or even Spain or even America. Um, and we've seen how the toll has been in those other cities worldwide. And we're a completely different ballgame in, in Lagos or in Nigeria where our health system cannot cope if we have thousands, millions of people uh, hospitalized. So we really have to take a lot of precautions right now and think of all the different systems that uh, need to be in place before we can really kind of let people move around as they did before uh, the virus hit, hit Nigeria. Now, why do we seem to be caught between a rock and a hard place when it comes to putting protective measures in place, particularly for protecting you know, our citizens? I think it's really tough uh, because, you know, we're really waiting on uh, the government to give advice um, all over the world. I'm not saying this is just a Nigerian problem. We're waiting for government to give advice and then whatever they say is what we do. So it's, it's really difficult. We also need to educate the populace on actually what is happening because a lot of people are, are 
they need to work. You know, it's, it's not something where they're thinking of, they need to eat, they need to feed their families, they need to protect their families. And so the priority is not necessarily on, oh, how do I make sure I have enough uh, face masks at home? How do I make sure I wash my hands uh, regularly? How do I make sure I have hand sanitizer? And all of these things are not easily easy to come by. If you don't have water in your house, you know, if you don't have water in your office, if you don't have a toilet, you know, things like that, or your place of work, then how are you expected to do all these things? Um, you know, I'm just thinking of the fact that in my hairdresser salon, they have water, but there's no toilet there. You know, I can't, I mean, I'm sure there must be a toilet somewhere. <laughs> so, you know, it's all these things that we all have to really think about. And the populace are not at the stage where they are thinking of those things as priority. They're thinking of their daily bread as priority. So right. there definitely needs to be more education to everybody. Um, and we shouldn't just, we, sh we have to think about our safety and our security. All right, but Olami Day. The government also, go ahead, I'm going on. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you so much. That's all we can have at this. Uh, thank you for joining us on the news. No problem. All right, Certainly. thank you. Bye.